to this miner or publisher uh, for the for the benefit of uh, um, say medical re research. However, this this is uh, under the condition that his own privacy is not violated. So so we want the the miner to see a k anonymous version of the raw table, but not the raw table itself. Okay. So the privacy guarantee we need here is that the miner should not be able to associate the sensitive information in the table with the corresponding customer. So you, you might already notice that this, uh, this description is not uh, terribly precise. No, it isn't. So actually, we can formulate this problem in various ways. And in this paper, we pick two ways. Okay? For both formulations, we give solutions. <clears throat> the first formulation is extracting the k-anonymous part of the table. <clears throat> so what, what is k-anonymous part of the table? Well, the k-anonymous part of the table is just uh, the maximum subset of rows of the table that is k anonymous okay so clearly if we just uh, take this subset of rows it's k anonymous and uh, we can view this procedure as k anonymization so so in the first formulation we 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 do, we want a protocol that implements this extraction in a privacy-preserving way. And the privacy protection we want here is to hide the sensitive information outside this part, this k-anonymous part, from the miner. Well, <clears throat> we are going to give the details a, li a, a little while later, OK? Another formulation is uh, a, a, an existing algorithm called MW algorithm, and we present a privacy preserving part, a version of this MW algorithm, and the privacy protection is to hide the cozy identifiers suppressed by this algorithm from the miner. So, <clears throat> if you are confused at this point, um, <clears throat> don't worry, we, we will make it clear later, okay? So here is the details of the <clears throat> first uh, problem formulation. So look at this table. Okay? The green part is the k anonymous part, okay? because it's, it's a maximum subset of uh, rows that is uh, k anonymous. <clears throat> and we want to build a protocol that computes this k anonymous part. Of the of the raw data, okay. And uh, what's the privacy guarantee? So recall that we want we want to prevent the miner from from linking a row to the to uh, from linking the private information in a row to the corresponding individual, okay. So here, you know, the miner. The miner sees for the k anonymous part, since it's already k anonymous, we don't worry about it. So all we worry about is the 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 rows outside the k, k anonymous part. If we can hide the sensitive information in these rows from the miner, then we are done. Okay, is it clear? Uh, why do you list these four rows? Uh, row one, row two, and row five, uh, row four, and row five is k anonymous part. I, I didn't see any uh, similarity between them. Uh, okay, so here k equals two. Okay? okay, and you see the first row and the, the last row has the same have the same cosy identifiers. You see it, and the second row and the the fourth row also have the same cosy identifier. So, you know, for these rows, 
you know, each of them is hidden in at least the two rows, and then we say it's two, two anonymous. Okay, so k is equal to two here. Yeah, k equals two here. Question? Oh, no. Okay, good. <clears throat> so, so, so the privacy guarantee we want here is to hide the sensitive attributes in the rows outside the k anonymous part from the minor. Okay? So how can we do this? The basic idea is that each customer encrypts her sensitive attributes using an encryption key that can be derived if and only if there are at least k rows whose quasi identifiers are equal. So this is pretty long sentence, but I don't I didn't figure out a way to simplify it. So <clears throat> you see, if if this is true, then what can we get? So we can we can reword this sentence in another way, which is the sentence below. If and only if there are at least k customers whose quasi identifiers are equal, see this is just exactly the same if and only if part of the former sentence, right? The miner is able to see the sensitive attributes. Why is that? Well, <coughs> the, the miner can derive derive the encryption key, and so he, he, can, he, he, can, uh, he can see the sensitive attributes. If he cannot, you know, because the attributes are encrypted, he has no idea what is in it, okay? So now, <coughs> so, and we notice that the, the, the below part is exactly what we want, okay? So now we, now all we need is to build the first, the first sentence. So, how can we build? How can we have each customer encrypts her sensitive attributes in this way, or, or say how can we build this kind of key structure, such that you know only if this condition is satisfied, <coughs> the the key can be de derived. Okay. So now, now let, let me explain how we, how, can, how we can build a key that is derivable only with greater than or equal to k quasi, uh, k quasi IDs that are equal. So the idea is pretty simple. We make the key equal to a, a function of the corresponding quasi IDs. So, and this key is shared among the customers using a threshold k secret sharing scheme. <clears throat> and each customer submits one key of the shares corresponding to her quasi identifier. So for those of you who are not very familiar with uh, cryptography, so a secret sharing scheme with threshold k means you know if you want if you want to learn this secret which is the encryption key here you need to know at least the so called k k shares okay note that each customer submits one share of the key corresponding to her quasi identifier so if there are at least k customers with the same quasi ID, then they will submit the shares of the same key. Okay, so so then the miner has at least k shares of the same key, and he can he can derive the encryption key he wants. Otherwise, because there there are fewer than k shares of the key, he cannot 